In a previous video, we looked at exponential graphs, and it has this particular shape here, and this is an example equation of an exponential graph. So it's always in the form y equals some number times some number to the power of x. Now, we could use this to generate points. So let's just say that x was uh, 1. Say x was 1. What would the y value be? Well, the y value is 4 times 3 to the power of the x value. So if the x value is 1, y is equal to 4 times 3 to the power of 1, 3 to the power of 1 is 3, 4 times 3 is 12, so we'd get 12. And let's just say we picked another value of x, so let's just say that x was equal to 2. What would the y value be? So y would be 4 times 3 to the power of the x value, which in this case is 2, so 4 times 3 squared, that's 4 times 9, which is equal to 36. Now let's suppose that we didn't actually know the original equation aligned. We were just given these two points on the graph. But we do, however, know that if it's an exponential graph, we know the general equation is y equals some number, let's call it a, times b to the power of x, where a and b are some unknown constants, x is your variable. So we have this equation, we've given these two points, and we need to work out what a and b are. In this particular case, it's 4 and 3, but we'll see a method for how to work this out. Let's start with an easier one first. So I've got this question here. I've got the point 212 lies on the graph with equation y equals 3 times a to the x. So this time, we don't have two unknown constants, we just got this one unknown value here, a. And we've got to find the value of a. So here we go, I've got the graph here, I've just drawn it for you. We've got the point 212 in the graph, and we have to find out that unknown a. Now, the absolute key point with all these kind of questions is to remember the relationship between the equation of a graph and the, the actual line itself. And it's basically that this is a membership rule for points belonging to this graph. So if this point, 212, belongs on the graph, it must satisfy this particular equation. So let's do this. We've got y equals 3 times a to the x. But we know that 212 is on the line, so it must satisfy this equation. So let's sub in the values. Well, we know this is the x value of the point. We know this is the y value. So we sub this x and this y into this equation, where we've got y, which is 12. So 12 is equal to 3 times a, which we don't know, to the power of x, which we do know is 2. So, yep. And then we just have to solve this particular equation. So what should we do? Well, a is being squared, and then it's been times by 3. We want to get rid of that times by 3, so let's divide both sides of the equation by 3. So 12 divided by 3 is 4. And then if you divide this by 3, it gets rid of the 3, and we're just left with a squared and then we square root both sides, and we get a is equal to 2. Now, we might think that a could also be minus 2, but because this graph is always positive, um, it has, always has positive y values, um, a has to be positive, basically. So don't worry too much about that, other than the fact that in GCC questions, a and b will always be positive. So a is 2, and we're done. Now, let's do a slightly harder question, where we have two unknown values, a and b. So we've got this. An exponential graph has equation y equals a b to the x. That just means a times b to the power of x. 1, 8 and 2, 32 lie on the graph. Find the values of a and b. And I've drawn it for you here, this exponential graph with the two points on it. So let's write this out. So we've got the equation y equals a times b to the power of x. Now, if we use the point 1, 8, as I've said before, if this point lies on the graph, it must satisfy this equation. So if we substitute it in, this is your x and this is your y. So y, which is 8, is equal to a, which we don't know yet, and I'm just going to imagine there's a times between there, times b, which we don't know, to the power of x, which is 1. So I have b to the 1 like that. Yeah? And then let's use our second point. So 232 lies on the line. So we've got 2, 
32. And if we substitute that into this equation, we've got y, which is 32, is equal to a, which we don't know, times b, which we don't know, to the power of x, which we do know that is 2 from our point. Yep. Now you might recognise these as simultaneous equations. We've got two equations with two unknowns, and you have various methods for solving simultaneous equations that you might have seen before. One of them is substitution, the other one is elimination. Now when you've done elimination with simultaneous equations, you've usually added or subtracted the equations, but that's not going to work in this particular case. What you have to do here is to actually divide the equations, and that allows things to cancel. So if I just label this equation one, and I label this equation 2, then what we want to do is, well, we need to divide them. Which way is better to divide them? Should we do this divided by this or this divided by this? Well, it makes more sense to divide the bigger one by the smaller one. So let's do 2 divided by 1. So if we do the left-hand sides divided by each other, 32 divided by 8 is just 4. Now, if we do a b squared divided by ab to the 1, when we divide these, now this is the bit that everyone always gets wrong, when you divide this by this, the a's cancel, a divided by a is just 1, so we don't really see it, and b squared divided by b to the 1, well do you remember when you divide these you subtract the powers, so b squared divided by b to the 1 is b to the 2 minus 1, which is just b to the 1, or it's just b isn't it, b to the power of 1 is b. Now that we've worked out b, we can now work out a, by substituting this b value 4 back into one or two equations. It's exactly the same as we did for solving simultaneous equations. Once we've found one of the values, we substitute it back into the one equations. So let's just sub it back into the first equation. So 8 is equal to a times b to the 1. So b is 4, so it's just 4. And we can see, therefore, that a must be equal to 2. Now I've got two test your understanding questions here, which you can try yourself. We've got this first question. 1, 4 lies on an exponential graph with equation y equals a times 2 to the x. Find the value of a. And we've got this second question here. We've got two points this time. We have a graph with two points, 2, 12 and 4, 48. And it has a general exponential equation, y equals a times b to the x. And you need to find the values of a and b. So why don't you stop the video now to have a go at these. So let's do the first one. Now we've got the equation y equals a times 2 to the x. We know the point 1, 4 lies on the line, so we sub it in as before. So we have y, which is 4, is equal to a, which we don't know, times 2 to the power of x, that's 2 to the power of 1. 2 to the power of 1 is just 2. So we can instantly see if we divide both sides of the equation by 2, we just get a equals 2. And we're done. So the equation was y equals 2 times 2 to the x. Now the second one, we have a more general exponential equation because we don't know the a or the b this time. So we've got y equals a times b to the power of x. Now we've got these two points here, 2, 12. If we substitute that in, we have y, which is 12, is equal to a, which we don't know, times b, which we don't know, to the power of x, which is 2. And then we also, if we sub in 448, we get y, which is 48, is equal to a, which we don't know, times b, which we don't know, to the power of 4. Now I'm going to label these equations again, 1 and 2. I find that's quite helpful for showing clear working. Now if you divide these, let's do 2 divided by 1 again. Now what is 48 divided by 12? Well, we get 4. Now a divided by a is just 1, so we just ignore it for a moment. And b to the 4 divided by b squared, well we subtract the powers, 4 minus 2 is 2, so it's b squared like that. And we know that b is positive, as I said before, so that gives us b is equal to 2. Now if we substitute that back into one of the equations, let's just do into the first one because that's slightly simpler. So we've got 12 
is equal to a, which we don't know, times b, which we do know now, it's 2 squared. And we can see that 12 is a times 4, i.e. 4a, and therefore a is equal to 3. And we're done.